Good morning, everyone. I'm Jonathan J. Reinhardt here from Wargaming Recon. Today is Monday, April 6, 2020. This is the pandemic coffee break. That's right. I am lucky enough to still get to work. I work from home. And while I work from home, and uh, I still take my coffee break, just like I would when I would be at work. So I have my Tim Hortons mug. No, we are not sponsored. Please, we'd love to get some sponsorship money from them, though. I, I love me some uh, Tim Hortons. Uh, but I have this with my Earl Grey tea, decaf, of course. I have cream and Splenda. And actually, I think it's a little cool. So let's see. Yeah, not as warm as it could be, but that's okay. Uh, so that's what I'm drinking. I'd love to know what you are drinking as well. Hope you have your beverage here uh, so that you can join me for coffee break. I choose to spend my coffee break with you, and I am so happy to do so. So we are back with another week. I feel like with this pandemic going on that every day is like five days all in one. I really lose track of time, even though I'm trying to stick with my schedule and everything, that every day is just like multiple days. And um, like on Saturday, I, I actually took a nap uh, for, I don't know, an hour or two. But I woke up, and I felt like three days had gone by in the time that I had napped. So it's just, it's really weird. I don't know if any of you feel this way as well, but it's just, it's bizarre. Uh, so I guess the world is just crazy right now anyway. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff for us to talk about today. Um, let's see, let's go down some things. Uh, the Queen in England gave a speech, which I really liked. I know not everyone did, but I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was really well done for the Queen. Uh, Prime Minister of England is in the hospital from COVID-19. Here on this side of the pond, uh, I live in Massachusetts in our capital, Boston. The mayor there has um, instituted a curfew for people and also has uh, required people to wear masks when they're out and about. Uh, our president actually had strongly uh, suggested that people had recommended, I don't know strongly is the right word. Um, good morning, Rob. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Mike. Uh, but the president had um, said that uh, people should wear masks when you're out and about, uh, of course, still stay six feet away or if you're across the pond, two meters. Uh, but he wouldn't wear it. Uh, I'm not making a political statement about that, but just these are some of the things going on throughout the pandemic. And today, actually, I went out. Uh, so my wife is sick. She has a cold or something. Uh, and uh, the doctors have told her to that she doesn't have the virus, uh, but that she should stay home and she should, you know, self-isolate basically for like seven days you know from everyone else because here at home it is what it is and so i've been the one who's been staying home right because i have asthma and i'm really in a high risk category but i, I had to go out today because i had to get some medication from the pharmacy uh so it was amazing really i went into the pharmacy and i do drive up anyway but i did drive up and there were several cars in front of me and i'm there and waiting and finally gets to be my turn and like i turn and i look and so the pharmacy I go to for the drive through Some of them have like windows that open, kind of like when you're at a drive through for a fast food place. And so like you have a handoff or whatever, but this one's more like a bank, right? So they're all encased, they have glass and everything, and then there's a sliding out thing. So it may have been a bank at one point, I don't honestly know. So I, I look and they're all in, you know, whatever. And the person there is in full gear, which I was really excited to see. Um, they had their uniform and all this stuff on because they're a pharmacist person with a lab coat. They had the proper gloves on. They had, um, they had glasses because they wore glasses, whatever and a face mask, but then they had another mask, right, that went over it with the face shield. And I was really excited that they're taking precautions and that they're being safe. And so the person helped me, and uh, I, of course, had to pay, so I put my um, card through, and they're doing some stuff, and they take a while, and they said, oh, just so you know, this little envelope is where your card is. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's so smart, right? Because this way you don't have to fumble around in the thing, and you're touching all this stuff, and other people may have touched, and not everyone's gonna be so careful. Uh, as you try to get your card, so it was just it was super easy. You could just grab the thing, didn't have to touch anything else. I had hand sanitizer in the car, did a little sanitizing, and off I went. So I was really super excited about that, uh, and also it was it was a big day for me. <laughs> I got out of the house, uh, not just like into the front yard, but like I actually I got out. Uh, so that was really really weird for me, um, but interesting as well. So I don't know if any of you are still going out and about. Uh, some of you might be essential workers. Some of you might just be going on around. Uh, so maybe that's what well, my experience is not abnormal uh, for the rest of you if you're going to this. But this was like, oh, my goodness, look at me. It's like the first time in a new place is really exciting. Um, also, 
uh, we got some news. Warlord Games is back. So they sent out an email actually this morning. I'm going to pull it up. I know they posted it on social media as well. But the title of the email is, We Have a Skeleton Staff. And I'm just going to actually show it so I can do the whole thing to you. It says, No, this isn't a new magic item for Warlords of Erewhon. Uh, we have a heroic band of volunteers back in action, picking and dispatching web store orders for you all. That means we are once again open to satisfy your hobby cravings. All of these Warlorders are working under strict social distancing guidelines and only those members of the team able to travel without using public transportation have been considered we're certainly not at full capacity so our usual fast turnaround time will take a little longer but we'll get your warlord games goodies out to you as fast as possible stay home stay safe and paint miniatures so i was very excited uh one that they're back but that more importantly that they're being safe and secure and that they can do these things so please everyone be patient if you're placing orders with warlord or any other business any other company um just kind of give them the benefit of the doubt because they're there they're working and the rest of us are at home most likely <laughs> or we should be and that's hard enough but they probably have a smaller staff so it's harder for them to adapt to everything as well so that's just it's nice that they're doing it uh, but of course hard that they're also doing it as well uh, over the weekend we happen to see online this really cool idea um, for painting some miniatures that I want to share with everyone and we shared it on Facebook and it's made the round so you might have already seen it if you are on Facebook I don't think we've shared it on Twitter uh, or anything but I'm pulling up the Facebook um, the Facebook I really do sound like an old man don't I the Facebook my goodness good morning Dave thank you for joining us today uh, the Facebook my goodness I'm such an old man and I, can be here, I should probably shave at some point but whatever and my hair is crazy and uh, we're all in that boat right so the thing we shared was um, where this father I believe um, had this space marine coloring page that his kid colored and then the I, I, do you know I honestly don't know if it's a guy um, the gamer because uh, I don't want to misgender anyone the gamer uh, took what the kid had done and they went ahead and they painted a mini as the same um, way that the thing was done uh, on the um, that the kid had done so I'm actually gonna pull up a picture on my phone so I can show all of you I did unfortunately cut some of it off so here we go so you can kind of see what they've done uh, good morning Rob um, and so here's what they've done so you can see this one is what the kid colored they use crayons or whatever so they went crazy and then this is what the gamer painted and it's so much better if you actually go on our social media so go on to our Facebook page and you'll find it and it just it looks so much cooler but I would highly recommend that you do this with your kids right so maybe you don't play Space Marines but you can get coloring pages of other stuff right uh, we mentioned in the past that bad squiddle games has stuff we mentioned um someone else who is doing it and they have a variety of things just search your line and, and find have them color in a Soviet uniform have them cover color in a tank or whatever uh, and then paint the model let them name it right let them um, give it some character and some background it's a cool way to get kids into this and I think that it's just kind of really fantastic that this is happening and people are doing it it's kind of becoming a thing I think and more and more and more people are saying oh where can I get that coloring page where can I do this where can I do that I want to do that idea I want to share I want to get my kids in to do you know whatever and so I just think that everyone is just really awesome that is happening and like I said we shared it on Facebook and I'm just checking the numbers uh, almost 26,000 people have seen it and over 30 almost 3,500 people have interacted with it in some way either they commented or they shared it or they liked it or whatever those are big numbers <laughs> for us anyway so that's just that's really cool um, so Rob W says has anyone else cleaned their paintbrush and their coffee oops uh, Rob did you just do that this morning in your hand solo mug is that what you did touch that buddy uh, we shared a meme a while ago where uh, it was that very thing and it was just it's so funny we found it and again we shared it online and, and people were like oh there you go and that's why I gotta say I don't drink coffee in an or any beverage like that in an open container when I'm painting 
because it is too easy to just kind of dip it in. So I'll use all the clothes like this or um, again, we're not sponsored by um, them, but like a bottle of uh, soda or water or something like that. I'll put it in the thing. It doesn't have to be a commercial bottle of water. You know, I have a, a reusable, refillable water thing. Uh, so any of those that kind of helps to uh, <laughs> uh, deal with that and make it not happen. And Rob R says, hello, hello, Rob. Thank you for joining us. We're so happy you're here today. And Malachi says, hello, everyone. Hoping everyone has heard that Carnage 23 is accepting game submissions. Gives me some hope moving forward. Well, that's exciting. So I know a lot of people love Carnage. I've not been, but maybe, maybe this will be the year I get to go because there's so few conventions happening. It's really weird. But what can I say? Uh, actually, speaking about conventions, I don't know if you've heard about the thing that Tabletop.events is doing. So they're running their very own online convention. And what? so it, it, it's not just any old convention, right? What they're doing is uh, if you sign up for it and you run it, uh, here we go, here's some information. It's called Con of Champions. And if you sign up and run for run it, um, there's, uh, they're basically using it as a fundraiser to help keep them afloat because obviously with times as they are, people aren't having events and that means that, um, they'd have to close is what it is. So they're having a virtual convention called Con of Champions. They need people to host games that will play and then people can buy badges to actually go virtually and play in this convention. And they're going to have some merch going up at some point, but badges you get to pick. Uh, basically how much you want to pay uh, more or less so they preset values going from two dollars a badge all the way up to seven thousand dollars a badge and then uh the more you spend the better uh the chances uh, you can get perks like really cool things or whatever so there's that and then you also get a special badge or whatever and uh, i'm trying to see if i can find some of the perks oh here we go so here are some of the perks that are uh here already so there's two VIP badges for KublaCon 2021. You can get $30 off your badge for Protospiel Indie 2021. Free advertising of your game company product and GJJ Games properties. I don't know who they are, but there's that. You can get a free set of dice from Dice Fanatics as long as you pay shipping. $5 gift card for the Game Crafter. Foam Brain Games has metal dice set plus box. You only pay shipping for that. Um, there's NTRPG Con, which is in Texas, I believe, they'll donate a custom wooden dice tower for anyone making a $225 pledge. You have to pay the shipping. And then they also offer up a $10 off badge to any future NTRPG Con and a custom dice um, bag with a TTE champion character on it. So that's tabletop events uh, champion character on it. Uh, you can get oh, there's all sorts of like convention things rising phoenix game con is given one early access pass for when they reschedule their convention uh troll lord games is giving a digital product uh, bundle which is really neat and i thought and i might just not be seeing it but i thought total con was on here at one point um yeah here we go total con is given two free early access badges so that's good if there are games that you really want to play at total con to make sure that you get those as well good morning carrie thank you for joining us and i really really am excited that you're here uh there's been all sorts of cool stuff going on and there's something you should do with your kids i was talking about the coloring thing uh so i'll just show it again for everyone uh, but where the kids color in i gotta find the picture uh the color in like a coloring page or something uh and we share this online so like the space marine here and then you paint it based off the coloring thing I think your boys would really enjoy that, so you should check that out and give that a go. Um, Malachi says, if you're a fan of TotalCon, which I am, I think you'd enjoy Carnage. Same vibe, but a lot more in regards to Wargaming. That's what I've heard. Uh, so that's very cool that that's happening. Now, I want to tell you why my name is Mud. That's right. In the description for this video, it says, Warlord is back, cool minis painting ideas, and my name is Mud. Acrylic Mud. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's so cheesy. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just what I do. So, I had, as I get closer to the mic, I had mentioned uh, the other day that there's a discount that you could get for shopping at Michigan Toy Soldier. And it was recommended to me uh, to buy some mud from them. 
to uh, take care of the fact that I love Sterling Mud and Sterling Battlemire, but those bottles from GW are like this big, right? And they're expensive. So I went ahead and I bought what was recommended. I bought Dark Mud Ground and Muddy Ground by, uh, it's called Ammo by Mig. So they came, and actually, this it's really weird, right? They came on April 2nd, on Friday, I guess it was. And I swear, like, we went and we got the mail, and we didn't see them, but they were there. Uh, so by the time we did see them on Saturday, the box was soaked. Everything was really just wrecked. Uh, the, the, these containers, thank God they're plastic, but, like, they were so soaked in water that even like the plasticky kind of paper was all just like wrinkled and stuff. So I was just really surprised by that. And I was not pleased, but I mean, it was there. Uh, it's just, we didn't see it. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Mark. Thank you for joining us. Um, I should mention for all of you, um, Matt runs the Hobby Bunker. So if you need any gaming supplies, please get in touch with them. They have all sorts of cool deals going on. Coupon code, if you order online, you can get free shipping for over $100, but no extra large items. And also, if you're in New England, I believe they still do, and if you do a phone order with them, if you're in New England, uh, they'll do free shipping for over $50. Uh, but Matt can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's what it is. And, you know, I don't know if I've ever seen these ammo by uh, MIGs at the Hobby Bunker, but they must be there. It's just I must not have seen them. But I ended up getting them from Michigan Toy Soldier. And uh, so on the container, it says they retail for $11.99. Uh, and oddly enough, on their web store, they charge $12.99. So thankfully, I had a 10% off. Uh, and so I got them for $10.39 each. And I've not yet opened them. So let's open them and see what they look like. I'm told Muddy Ground, I guess, is going to be the closest to Sterling Mud. And now, these are huge, right? So this is really nice. And here, I can turn it so you can see here. It shows some of the, we'll get a better picture, but it shows uh, some of the other options you have. So from light to dark, you have arid dry ground, dry earth ground, light earth ground, turned earth ground, and muddy ground. Um, and so I got dark mud ground and muddy ground. So muddy ground is what I'm opening. And let's see. So it has a little thing on it, which is actually open. And here's Muddy Ground. And you don't... It smells funky. Um, <laughs> it's lighter in color than um, Sterling. But do you know what? For the um, price, we're definitely going to give it a go and see how it is. And the Dark Mud Ground is... Oh, I got paint on me. Dark Mud Ground is darker looking from the box. But let's take a peek. So we'll open this up again. And we'll see. So here's muddy ground and definitely darker, not as much texturing in it, uh, but again, I think this will be just fine and we won't honestly know until we get it on to some bases and stuff. So I will use this for some larger areas. Oh, it stinks though. My goodness. What did they put in this? What did they put in this? Acrylic mud with realistic, varied texture, ready and easy to use, blah, 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 blah. Can be thinned, tools cleaned with water, non-toxic, and odorless. Odorless, my butt. Dries within 24 hours. They're full of it. It stinks. It, like, it, it smells bad is what I mean. It's not like it's a terrible product. It might be. I don't know. But it just it smells bad. And Oh, man. It's not pleasant. You don't get any of that odor from um, the other stuff. But, oh, well. That's life. That's what they say. Um, what else do I want to show you? Oh, I want to remind you also... Um, Mark says, LOL. Yeah, it, it reeks. My God. It's not like garbage or anything, but it's just, it's an unpleasant, like, chemical, synthetic smell. It's really, I think you want some ventilation around when you're using that, because that's, oh man, that's not so great. Um, the Wargaming Company, today's the final day for the uh, discount 25% off. So you should buy. And I've been harping about this. So I'm going to show you again. Buy knock trees from them. Really, they're worth it. Now, they're uh, evergreen trees. You can get a 50-pack where it's a dollar tree. So after 25% off, uh, you end up paying like 30-something dollars in change and then shipping. So buy trees from them. Today's last day. And then go to things in the basement. 
and you can get, I believe, 10% off. Uh, they're doing there as well. And buy a regular basis to put the trees on. And then you could use Ammo by MIG, <laughs> Money Ground on this, and I uh, get it going. I've been using Vallejo um, Black Mud or Dark Mud or something like that that I picked up from the Hobby Bunker uh, last year. I think it was. Was it last year? At the uh, game day. Something like that. So that's what I've been doing for my trees, but buy trees because the trees are really good. Good morning, Pete. And then go to things in the basement and buy a regular basis, like I was saying. Awesome. I want to show you also that I inked my um, chimney here and it really got into the recesses. It was nice. I, and it was tricky though because I used. Which I think I got from the Hobby Bunker as well. Army Painter Quick Shade Dark Tone. So I used this and I started brushing it on, and then it was just beating up everywhere. And I thought that was really odd that it would just form beads. It didn't really do anything. So I took a foam brush and I really kind of went over it and kind of worked it in and everything. Um, and it didn't beat up as much, but I think some of the beading that is there is nice because it adds a little texture look to the stone and the bricks and everything. And I think it makes it look more realistic. Uh, so I think maybe a quick, maybe dry brush on the corners. But honestly, I'm kind of happy with it as is. I might not even dry brush it or do any highlighting. Good morning, Jamie. Thank you for joining us. So I don't know. If you think I should do any dry brushing or highlighting, awesome. But otherwise, I think this might be done. Um, and I don't know. This is just, it's a beautiful piece. I love this. I really love things in the basement. I think they're, for my money, one of the best Maybe the best, but I didn't say that officially. Um, one of the best uh, MDF kits uh, around. And Mark says, is that like null, null oil link ink? Yes. Uh, so this is, so I got dark tone and strong tone. And strong tone is like the brown, I think it is. And dark tone is like the black from GW. Uh, at least that's what I've been told. And I got these because they are cheaper. And they last longer, and because they have... Actually, there's someone outside. I'm getting it on me. Uh, but because they're dropper bottles, it's easier to apply, and you don't have to worry about it going bad as quickly. The bottles are better. They seal better. And I'm inking my hands as I speak. Uh, <laughs> but yes, it is like a null, null oil. So it's just... It's really handy for that kind of stuff. And I like it. So I would highly recommend these. Um, these are from the Army Painter. So check them out. Uh, we'll have a link, uh, like, get it from the Hobby Bunker, but if you can, we'll have a link on our Amazon so we can get um, some monies. Um, and then I want to give you an update on the tent barracks. So uh, ages ago, what was it, a week or more ago, I was talking about whether I was, um, uh, whether I wanted to um, seal, use like a dull coat or something like that on my tent because of all the fabric. So I have this here, it's been over a week, and you can tell, like this side here, I did not do, and it's more flexible, and this side I did, and it's not as flexible. It's a little harder, rigid, and then there's some whiteness to it. So I think my decision that I made before of not sealing the tent is a way to go, or if you're going to do it, I would say, seal the stuff separately and then apply this and i think Jorg said that he sealed everything um he doesn't always seal his buildings but he sealed everything uh so i don't know about if you got the whiting or not i used oh, what did i use i used krylon i think it was so it's not tester's dull coat but i never had i haven't had a problem with the krylon stuff uh since because the tester's dull coat has run out and so i've been using krylon on all my other mdf stuff and i haven't had any frosting of anything good morning david thank you for joining us carrie says about the army painter quick shades they are awesome also the white shade they use is great for shading whites i don't do a lot of white but that would probably be worth uh, checking out uh do you know what they call it is it just white shade carrie or do they actually name it something um you know like something fancy or whatever who knows um tonight at i think it's eight right pete i um, eight o'clock tonight the Mythwits have their live podcast so you should check that out. It's on Facebook. It's at what? Facebook.com slash Mythwits or something like that. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. And then tomorrow we are doing our another um, Netflix party. And we're showing The Dirty Dozen, I believe. Right. So that'll be at 8 o'clock. And I'm looking forward to that. And I hope some of you are able to join. 
um, in case you forget you need to use Chrome you need to have the Netflix party uh, plugin installed um, these are both free things and then I'll put a link out sometime tomorrow night you click on the link it'll connect you to Netflix and then uh, you need to click on the NP uh, icon on the right of your web browser. It's like to the right of your address bar and that gets you into the chat. Uh, and some people had problems last time, but hopefully this works for you. Uh, we'd love to have you there so we can uh, have some fun watching The Dirty Dozen. It's a good movie and it's a nice way for us to stay apart, but be together. All right. So very cool that that is a thing and is happening. And um, what else do I want to say? Oh, I do want to say I'm not really enthused with Michigan Toy Soldier in that um, I never got any updates about anything. And so, like, looking at their receipt that they sent, it feels like they're, they do things like Brookhurst to me. So, like, it's a printout of um, my order. And then with, like, the um, credit card slip just attached, which is fine. But, like, there was a... They said they were going to send it standard shipping, standard ground, and then they sent it priority mail. Uh, so there was a uh, tracking with it, but then they didn't give a tracking number. They, there was no communication. I had no idea when it was coming or no information about anything. So I, I couldn't tell. I was like, well, when's it going to come? What's going on? There's nothing going on. And so I just, I was really confused by all that. And um, then it just it randomly showed up. So I would have appreciated a little more communication. I was like well maybe you know they're just busy because of whatever and things are hard so i was trying to be more understanding but like how hard is it to just have an automated email to say like your thing's on the way i mean i don't know in this day and age i guess that's what i would expect and maybe that's expecting too much um i don't know adrian's not here to tell me that's the case but going by what he told me about brookhurst he said it's not expecting too much so <laughs> i'm gonna say i'm okay um Carrie says the white shade, it's game color wash pale gray. It's the name on the um, bottle. So people look for that. And then I have a question for all of you. I love to ask questions. Questions are how you get answers, right? So I'm pulling out something that we've shown before on the podcast. So these are freebies that I got from things in the basement for shopping from them from convention. And the question is, I have... This is one picnic bench, and I have another one. What should I do with these? Should I just paint them up and have them for fun? Uh, or should I do something with it? I'm trying to think, like, what I could, like, what kit they would go with. And I'm having a hard time thinking about that. Uh, should I hang on to these and use them as a giveaway for something, maybe? Or, um, I don't know. Like, I literally have no idea what to do. I love them. But, again, I don't know what to do with them. I get two. So what should I do? <laughs> uh, let me know what you think. I would love to know if um, this is some a cool game. Uh, I'm trying to think like if they would fit in like black powder or I mean they're not gonna fill in Hail Caesar. Or, like what would what game system would they fit in with? I guess World War Two maybe. But I'm trying to think like if these style of picnic benches. I guess they're kind of I mean they're timeless I suppose right. They feel very North American, uh, almost Adirondack ish, but like. Would they be out of <laughs> place in like a, a a town or something for World War Two? Like I I don't know. Uh, I just I really have no idea. Uh, Carrie says picnic playground battlescape to start your daughters into tabletop. So my eldest loves playing with my Dwarven Forge stuff, and so every so often I'll take that out and we build stuff and we play and things. I don't. She turns things into babies or whatever. We do that, and the stuff is indestructible, so it's awesome. So she really loves uh, doing that. Uh, so we do that uh, together. And Mark says, scatter trains always useful. Paint them up and use them. Details make the table. Use them for Fallout, but I don't play Fallout. And Rob says, Walking Dead for pic um, picnic tables. That's a good idea, but I don't play Walking Dead either. I mean, I, I guess I could, but that's a whole other system to start. It almost sounds to me like maybe these are better as uh, giveaways for people to use for followed or uh, whatever. I mean, like if I play the Marvel game, I, I can't think of what the Marvel game is. They could fit for that. Um, is it Crisis? Something. What is a Marvel game? Why can't I think of that? Marvel game. You know what I mean, though. Uh, the Marvel Miniatures game or the Batman game. I can see the tables being awesome for that. Uh, I'm having a hard time thinking of what I could use them for with historicals. The closest I can think is like World War II stuff, 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, keep the ideas coming, though. Uh, yeah, Rubs, it sounds like you have some giveaways. I think maybe I do. I do love to do a giveaway. We already have the one going for uh, the audiobook uh, narrated by Henry Hyde. We're talking about subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to wargamingrecon.com slash YouTube. And we want to get more subscribers. And I don't think we have a set a goal. Um, so let me go to YouTube and see where we're at, actually. Uh, and I can update that to tell you where we are before we start giving stuff away. And Carrie says, I knew I had a tabletop when the Disney Infinity figure started assaulting others over the couch. Donald Duck and Captain America taking on Mickey and Darth Vader. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so Jamie, actually, uh, one of our team members, uh, he had shared on our uh, fan club page uh, a video of his eldest. And his eldest was playing with some of his uh, minis. And he's asking um, if others have experienced this, that his um, oldest child had grabbed... <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to remember what he shared publicly, because I don't want to share things that he hasn't. Um, but that his oldest, he shared pictures of the oldest and him playing games. But a video of his old, oldest taking stuff, and they go like, pow, pow, pow. And he's like, for, the having narratives and stuff going on. I was wondering who else had done this. So there's a nice conversation between him and Mike Payne about this. Um, and whether uh, any of us gamers let our kids do this with their gaming stuff. And, I mean, I mentioned the Dwarf and Forge. Haven't quite so much with the actual miniatures or anything yet. So we're up to 160 subscribers on YouTube. Wow, we're up to 160 subscribers on YouTube. Way to go. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's say I want this to get to 175. And then we'll do uh, both the uh, giveaway that I previously mentioned, which is six copies of the, um, what is it? Um, I can't think of the name of the it's Wellesley versus Juno, something, something, something in Portugal. It's the Napoleonic Wars uh, audiobook written by Mike Sace and narrated by Henry Hyde. I have six copies of those that were giving away the digital once we get to 175, given away to uh, people who subscribe to us on YouTube. And then I'll also do another giveaway for one or both of these picnic tables, which I think Mike Payne could use picnic tables. I'm just saying and um, hang high, maybe. Uh, it just feels like a thing that might be appropriate there. Uh, good morning, Renee. How are you? Hope you and Jay are doing well. Um, and Mike says, coffee break vignette. Yes. That's... Mike, maybe I should send them to you and you could do the coffee break vignette for me. Because you have mad skills and I do not. But you could take these and do the details like Mark's talking about. And we could have like a little Tim Hortons mug. <gasps> you can have a Tim Hortons mug on the, on the thing. Anyway, how awesome would that be? I think that's what you should do. I'll send them. You know I will. Uh, and I think that's everything I have for us today. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget tonight is Mythwits. Tomorrow night we're doing Dirty Dozen uh, as a Netflix party. So I'll remind you about that. Tomorrow we'll be back at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for watching. Get your order in for the knock trees from the Wargaming Company and go to Things in the Basement for a regular basis. You won't regret it. Uh, these are like amazing things. And uh, make sure you check out some other stuff and help out some of those small businesses because they need all the help they can get, really. Buy local if you can. So, as you know, please listen to the experts about the pandemic, the scientists, the doctors, the medical people. Not Karen from Facebook. I read a, a thing, which I'll share with you, even though I'm trying to do the closer. Um, I read a thing on um, a line the other day. I think it was on Twitter. Good morning, Nathan. Uh, and so a woman says, does anyone else think that Karen slur is women hating and based on class prejudice? So I, I shared that with a friend of mine from work uh, who um, <laughs> said, spoken like a true Karen. And it just, it was really funny to me. So... Oh, Karen. My goodness. Yeah, don't listen to Karen. Listen to the experts about the pandemic. Get your advice from experts. You won't regret it. <laughs> so be safe. Be kind. Be good. Both to yourself and others. Be healthy. Please stay well. Do your part to flatten the curve. Stay home. Stay home, please. Uh, if not for your sake, for mine. Remember, I'm at the high-risk category. 
I get this thing and it's really, really bad. So please do your part to make sure I don't get it, please. And um, we'll be back tomorrow with another pandemic coffee break. So no matter how busy you are, no matter how much time you're spending thinking, my goodness, that ammo by mix stuff reeks because it does. Oh, my God, it stinks. Um, You know that you got to you have to you need to keep on gaming. <laughs> Mike, you're funny. Send some sending minis and I'll do it. I wish I had some to send to you.